back to my kitchen. I am Tina with Hanging with Frugal Tina. I want to thank everybody just for the moment. Thank you for tuning in. It does mean a lot to me. So what are we doing today? I'm going to do a three-day challenge. I'm going to feed myself breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks for about $6. I will put the total up around here somewhere when I figure it all out. But I want to get right to it because there's a lot of work to do. When you're feeding yourself on a little bit of money, there's a lot of prep that you have to do to, to get to that end result, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to stop bumping my gums. I'm going to get over there. I'm going to start cooking. Let's get it. Let's go. Come on. It's me again. I forgot to mention something. The challenge that I'm doing, the three-day breakfast, lunch, and dinner challenge, is from Aldi's and Aldi's alone. Also, one of the reasons I don't have the exact total is that when I went there, I bought some carrots. When I got home, I was going over my receipt. The price for the carrots were not on there. I called the store. Store said, don't worry about it. We were cleaning out that inventory. New inventory was coming in. They're going to throw it away. They're perfectly good carrots. I don't know why they would do that, but that's what it was. I am going to add the, the, the cost of the carrots in. I just don't have it on my receipt. So let's get back to the cooking. Come on, let's go. Here's everything I use to create these nine meals. Macaroni and cheese, a can of black beans, carrots, a Roma tomato, a small can of tomato sauce, eggs, two bananas, and a loaf of bread. For breakfast, we're going to have two fried eggs, toast, and half a banana. All right, I'm going to be putting some things up out of order. One, for the sake of time, length of video, and also so that makes more sense throughout the video. So here I have the crust of six slices of bread. I'm going to make breadcrumbs and croutons out of them. I cut some small and some big. We're going to start with the um, breadcrumbs. I'm going to put them in the bowl and I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons Italian seasoning, one half teaspoon onion powder, one half teaspoon garlic powder, and a pinch of kosher salt, a good pinch. I give that a good old mix. We're then going to add a teaspoon and a half of olive oil or butter, whatever you had, and we're going to stick it on the pan and put it in the oven at 350 to toast. Okay, here we go with the croutons. We're going to add them to the bowl. And to that, we're going to add a tablespoon of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon, both onion powder and garlic powder. I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of the yellow cheese from the macaroni and cheese. And the same thing with the Italian style grated cheese. We're going to give that a really good mix. And then we're going to add a teaspoon and a half of olive oil. And there you go, breadcrumbs and croutons. These are good. I don't know if you can hear that crunch, but they're delicious. Okay, so I'm going to use these beans to make um, black bean patties. I've never made them. Let's hope they come out good. In order to make black bean burgers, you need your beans a little bit dry. So I'm going to take about three quarters of the can, about, I'm going to drain them and put them on a cookie sheet so I can dry them in the oven. But not before I give them a good old rinse. I'm going to line my cookie sheet with some parchment paper and put the black beans on there in a single layer. We do not want them piled up. This is what they look like at the 15 minute mark. Boy, oh boy, are these things ugly. Well, they got about five more minutes to go. I'm gonna give them a quick stir and put them back in the oven. While those were finishing in the oven, I took out my little chopper and ground up those breadcrumbs. Perfection. So now that our black beans are completely dry and ugly as they are, I'm gonna put them in the uh, chopper and chop them up. I do, however, want them to still have some kind of a chunk to it. 
You may notice that I have one third of the beans set out in another bowl. That is because Eric loves black beans and asked when I was done if he could have a bite. So I had to keep it out so he didn't have anything with his um, allergens in them. Time to start adding the seasoning. We're going to start by adding one eighth cup of breadcrumbs. You're going to add a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, a pinch of salt, one fourth teaspoon cumin, and one teaspoon Worcestershire sauce. Once that's done, we're going to give it a big old mix. We're going to grab that egg over there, give it a nice little whisk, and then add it to the beans as a binder. Keeping just a little bit out for that third burger in the back. Once again, we're going to give it a mix, and then take your fingers and pinch it together to make sure that it sticks. It did look dry, but it was moist enough. And nothing ruins a good bean burger than too much moisture. We're going to form these into three separate patties. Don't think that we're going to have three boring old bean burgers. I have three different ideas for three different burgers. These bean burgers are going to be good and hearty. I'm going to make all three and then reheat them as I need them. I really can't get over the size of these burgers. The burger in the back that I'm going to let Eric have a bite of is going to be just a plain bean burger. The second burger we're going to season with taco seasoning. And the third bean burger we're going to make a cheese burger. To the pan I'm going to add our vegetable spread, air quotes butter, and a little bit of olive oil to cook it in. Since everything is already cooked, we really just have to heat these things through. While the hamburger is doing its thing, I'm going to make ribbons out of these carrots to make a carrot salad. That carrot salad will also go over multiple meals. Well, I did the best I could. I decided that I was going to use some Olive Garden salad dressing that I had in the refrigerator. I'm just going to pour some on and let it sit in the refrigerator over the next couple of days. For the burger, I toasted up some bread. I'm going to slice this tomato down and I'm going to also have a carrot side salad. I have to tell you, this burger was phenomenal. I would eat it dry on the bread just like that any day. I did, however, put the tomato on there and then I dipped a little Thousand Islands. Absolute deliciousness. I'm talking chef's kiss good. I want to try and make carrot muffins as a side. Not real sweet like a breakfasty kind of a thing. Just a carrot muffin like a savory one. So the first thing I'm going to do is grind up some of these carrots. I only need a half a cup. Let's get started. We need a half a cup of flour. Mine is self-rising flour, so you will not see any of the baking powder. One eighth teaspoon cinnamon. One eighth teaspoon salt. One half cup brown sugar. And one half teaspoon baking soda. And mix well. To my growing bowl, we're going to add one half teaspoon oil followed by the half a cup of carrots. We're just going to mix that up real good and then we're going to add one whipped egg. We're going to give that another good mix. Now you're going to add your water one tablespoon at a time. Mine took four tablespoons. Well right about spoon number three this happened. Oh my word. But anyway onward forward here we go at the fourth tablespoon. I found some muffin wrappers up in the cabinet. Well, that's going to save a lot on cleanup. And the good news is I was only shooting for three muffins and I got four. Now in the oven at 350 degrees. Wow, yummy. Day one is full of prep work. I'm going to boil up all of the pasta from the macaroni and cheese. Now I'm going to drain the pasta, but I'm going to reserve the water it was cooked in. 
pay no attention to my yucky pot. I'm going to add the reserved pasta water in there and then I'm going to add some diced up carrots for our soup. To that water, I'm going to add one half teaspoon of my chicken bouillon. I'm going to move that to the back burner while I pan fry the pasta. In here, I added vegetable spread, what we call butter, in the pan along with some olive oil. I had intended on putting one third of the box of macaroni and cheese in, but then thought better of it, and I added about three quarters of that third to the frying pan. I just want to get a little crust on the pasta so it's not so floppy like you see here. And that is done. Let's get back to the soup. I'm going to season this soup to taste. I'm going to give you an estimate because it really depends on how much water and all that that you have in there. I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a fourth teaspoon of cumin, a half teaspoon of basil. I still have more than a quarter can of black beans left, so I'm going to add some of those to the soup. That was my second spoonful. Now I'm going to add a tablespoon of tomato sauce. I'm going to let that simmer for a minute, and then I'll be back to it. And now I'm going to add the pasta. After a little tasty poo, I have decided it needs about a teaspoon more of the tomato sauce. If you get any benefit at all from my content, you can help me out by clicking like, share, commenting, and definitely hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And there is my dinner. I even have some soup left in the pot. We're also going to add some of those homemade croutons on top. I cannot begin to tell you how much flavor was in the soup, that muffin, and the carrot. It was just absolutely delicious. See you later. Bye.